is encouraging them. Claire Curran. Thank you, Mr Chair. Uh, well, I did sit on the uh, Commerce Committee that heard this legislation. Uh, the Commerce Committee is a split committee, and, uh, and we, the Labor Party, supported this legislation at first reading, uh, not um, at that point being cognizant of the significant issues that it raised. Um, once we were at the committee and heard submitter after submitter um, come before us and, um, and talk about the threats uh, of these measures to domestic, our domestic industry, uh, we became seriously concerned. We tried to get substantial amendments and questions answered uh, unsuccessfully through this legislation, which, which basically led us to believe that um, this was being pushed through for uh, a set of other reasons other than common sense, um, because it is a counterintuitive piece of legislation if uh, you were to believe that this government was committed to, uh, to a growth in exports, to a growth in the productive economy, to a growth in, our, um, in small business becoming big, bigger business and being able to uh, compete uh, on the world market with good quality products. What this does is open the door to a um, serious impacts on numerous industries in this country, and it gives um, uh, powers, ministerial powers, that uh, are, are questionable in terms of. And I think you've heard David Parker outline um, the pressure that can be, that can be brought to bear, uh, and that the impact that that could have on um, on ministerial discretion. Um, I'm, I, I would like to say that I'm, uh, I uh, applaud the minister, uh, new minister Jackie Dean, for taking a couple of calls. I know she's not she, the minister, the, the minister Jackie Dean, for taking a couple of calls on this because it is important to be able to engage in actual debate in the committee stage, um, true debate, to be able to get some sense of what on earth was in the government's mind when they. Um, uh, decided to press through with, with this legislation. The reason we have such a substantial um, set of amendments before us today in the committee stage is because that split committee at the Commerce Committee uh, voted against this bill, so the, the government members didn't have a majority, so it had to be returned to the House unamended. So therefore, um, these amendments that are before us in the committee stage are not uh, are as a result of that and have enabled the wider debate um, that is occurring today. I know when the minister did speak first, she talked about the and this is going to the public interest test. And I want to touch on the the issues are in the public interest test, the time that it takes to get an inquiry happening, and the impact on domestic industry of that, and then the intent. Uh, what, you know, what is in the government's mind around this. Um, with regards to the public interest test, which is um, at, um, in part four, um, clause 10 F, um, around the investigation, uh, other speakers have, uh, have noted the, um, the eight reasons, um, the, the, the eight issues that uh, have to be taken into account when undertaking um, that public interest test. But I just want to mention four of them because they go to, and, 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 and there's a and, and pose to the House the issues that the, the dilemmas that occur for this sort of Solomon's choice approach that can be taken by a minister um, because they, they have to take into account, into account whether um, prices will go down it, through a dumping into the New Zealand market, whether it provides more choice, whether it affects product quality, um, and whether um, it affects the financial performance of the domestic industry. So if, if it means that prices will go down and, and consumers get more choice, and, and bear in mind that the the rationale for this legislation was to provide what they called a, a consumer, um, a more consumer choice. It would seem that that is what the intent is of this legislation. So let's say it means prices go down and there's more choice, but what actually ends up in the market is a lesser quality product and if it affects the quality of, um, of the, the financial performance of our domestic industry. Mr Chair. 
Claire Curran. Thank you. Then, um, then how does that decision get made? It's either got to be one or the other. And, uh, and the concern that submitter after submitter had, and I know that, that New Zealand Steel has been mentioned on a couple of occasions, um, they talked about an unnecessary and radical shift in New Zealand's trade policy, resulting in materially weakened an anti-dumping regime and a significant threat to New Zealand industry. I can't stress highly enough just how um, alarming it was to hear the steel industry say that their vo very viability was on the line um, if this legislation is passed. Um, but I also want to refer to another submission, Mr Chair, um, and I want to quote from it, and I'll tell you who it was after I've quoted from it. They say, we're not against global trade or protectionism and support the case where a country does something extremely well and removes the need for local production of such products, but cannot agree that in some situations there is a need to tilt the playing field in favour of dumped or subsidised goods from overseas against local manufacturers, product producers and the jobs they create. How could such action detrimental to the country's productive base be in the public interest. We consider that small manufacturers and producers are less able to present a strong voice to the relevant government departments. The public interest test aggravates this situation. This um, was the New Zealand Flower Growers Association, um, and they, um, they uh, sent an impassioned um, submission to the select committee. And and they wanted to bring to our attention that New Zealand is 97% of business, that 97% of the business, businesses in New Zealand have fewer than 20 employers, employees, and that all of the flower growers in New Zealand fit this category. They, um, the 97% of businesses employ 33% of all employees. Um, they, uh, and they were trying to get their voice heard. And I'm trying to give them a voice today um, to the minister in charge of this legislation, who I think is still the minister of small business, am I correct? Um, uh, that uh, why are those voices not being listened to with this legislation? What is the point of this legislation when um, we are uh, supposedly, on the one hand, the government says we're trying to get to 40 per cent uh, export to GDP. We're currently under 30 per cent. Here we have a piece of legislation that is encouraging, allowing, enabling the dumping of uh, product into our market that may be sub-quality, um, but, it, oh, it might give more choice and less prices to consumers. So how is that? How is that in the public interest? And I think that is the crux of this legislation. Um, other complaints with this legislation were around the time it takes to get an investigation um, into, whether, into whether a tariff would be imposed, and then the subsequent impact of that, because adding 90 days to this process, the subsequent impact of that on local industry. Um, these are really valid questions. Um, the reason this legislation is being um, hurried through in the next few days is because ultimately um, the original suspension period, and we're going back to the building industry and the, the reason um, for allowing us a temporary ability for those dumping provisions to be relaxed was um, after the Christchurch earthquake. Well, those dumping, those provisions um, are due to end on at the close of the 31st of May. Um, so, and, and they and the and the amendment, one of the amendments in this bill today is to um, extend that suspension period until the close of 30th of June 2019, which is why it has to be passed before the 31st of May. There are significant issues here, and there are contradictions, absolute contradictions, um, in the rationale and the logic as to why you would put New Zealand industry, our productive economy, um, at such risk. 
with such a piece of legislation that is not supported by, uh, by Australia, which has gone through this um, process twice before, and, and yet we push through harmonisation um, uh, laws with Australia. Why is the government, what is the intent of the government? I think David Parker uh, got to the crux of that. Chair. Michael Wood. Uh, thank you, Mr Chair. Um, in line with my other colleagues,